So many a chiropractor has challenges with motivating an associate. And so it's like, how do you get an associate to perform at the level that you know that they can and that um, you certainly do? And, you know, without resorting to um, physical violence or uh, threats or coercion, you know, how, how is it that you can uh, allow an associate to really start to, uh, to reach their peak and to, and to fast track the learning that's available for them in your practice? Because you're giving them a huge opportunity um, to cut off years and years of, of hard knocks and hard learnings if they were to do it by themselves. And sometimes, you know, it's not uh, always seen that way or maybe not appreciated. So, you know, how is it that you can allow the young associate particularly, uh, maybe a new grad, um, to get the best start and to really get out there and um, learn from what you've gone through in terms of hard knocks, possibly the expense, uh, uh, the frustration of getting the practice to where it is now. And so uh, how can you let them stand on your shoulders and go to, to the next level? Now, I uh, obviously have had a lot of associate practices over, over the years and a lot of associates through the practices. And um, one comes to mind that was one of my very first associate encounters and I was really green. I was really green at the associate thing. And I think that served me really well um, in on reflection because I was in a position of, of saying to the associate, look, I haven't done this before. Uh, what's the what's the drill? You know, you haven't done it before either. So let's look at what it is that you bring to the um, the organization or the practice and I'll look at what I bring to it and let's see if we can combine our resources to make it something better. Now, in retrospect, and I, I'm sure I didn't do this consciously at the time, but I realize now that that it was giving that associate uh, an opportunity to play to their strengths, an opportunity to play to the things that they were really, really strong on and or he was very, very strong on, um, I and I wasn't. And so if I'd have caught, made him um, sing to my song totally and do things the way I did it, um, we could have had um, different outcomes to the ones that we did get, which when he got inspired to do his thing and to do it really well, and in fact follow a, a technique that he was passionate about that um, was totally new and foreign to me, um, it, it was magic. He, um, he flew. Now, he, there was a strategy to that and a structure to that. And I'd like to share that with you so that you can get some ideas to um, how that allowed this eager young graduate to really get up and hit his straps and, and um, go f to, to very high levels of productivity in a very short period of time. So let's jump over here and let's have a look at that one. So this is uh, the innate model. And if you haven't done the innate model quiz, um, just go to the innatemodel.com and you can do a, a free quiz there, which helps you get an understanding of your neurological preferences, uh, your behavioral preferences, and um, therefore um, an appreciation for others. And obviously you look at, at this when it comes to an associate or and, and or your team. Uh, so, but at the moment, you know, just just know that we'll, we'll cover enough information here for you to get an idea of how this works. Um, so what I wanted to, to show you relative to this associate encounter um, with a, a young chap who was really, really keen and I was really, really green. And so this this was a, um, a recognition that firstly, and if we look at the, the representation of the brain here, um, we, we've got the right side, we, we have the left side. So give you some some orientation um, and uh, as you know the the right frontal is tends to be big picture future oriented um, and likes to um, get a, a heartfelt response so so it's it's an inspirational center and it, it relates very much to purpose you know where where are we going and what I found was was when I sat down with this new associate, 
Um, and it was actually it was a potential. So he came up and, and, and uh, from university and saw us and spent some time with us over a weekend. Um, and at that point in time, I hadn't done any sort of cultivating of associates. It was all like, well, about time we had one, where, where do I get one sort of thing? It was, it was you know, very naive at that, at that point. But I think you know, the, the benefit of him coming up and spending time with us, got a feel for him. And there seemed to be a fit. This is way before any of this sort of profiling and so forth. But um, the, and there was a there was a, a a common purpose there, and you know it was around clinical delivery and it was around doing the very very best that we possibly could as as a, a Cairo. And um, so I think you know the important thing at that at that stage was that we were both on purpose. So we're both. Um, even though the different modalities are, or different styles of getting there, uh, there was this uh, way in which we both saw we could help humanity and help the the practice by virtue of being chiropractors. So, so that was that was a big tick. The next thing that's critical in this context um, is is what is what is the protocol? You know what what are the protocols that we use? And that's something that needs to be in place in a practice. I realized that um, before the associate came on board and we were in the process of getting um, procedures and policies in, in place. But the real big one here, I think, was was the um, clinical process relative to the education pro, um, protocols and looking at how I could allow someone else to uh, do what I do outside of even outside of technique. So you know, educational things, um, management protocols as far as uh, the practice members are concerned, and so that was that was a, an area where we could also give a tick. We could say, well, you know, we've got this in place, and therefore uh, it allows someone to come in, uh, go through the protocol, and uh, create a duplication of what we're we're offering. So. Uh, that was that was the second phase, and that that was uh, you know, sort of a more left brain, um, procedurally detail oriented um, process. So that's what what we refer to um, within this innate model as quadrant two. So within that, then we looked at well, what what is it that allows um, his mirror neurons to work um, and encode what I'm doing. The fact is, is that um, he would be taking on something of what I was doing. And so I had to be really, criti really critical of myself um, because regardless of what I was doing, he was taking it on. So, so the uh, education process was to have him come in and spend some time with us, um, if you like, parroting. So he came into, into the practice then <clears throat> and parroted. So, so he came in and observed um, the protocols at play and how they were being rolled out. So that um, following around, and this is actually something that, that many um, associates pull back from. It's really quite fascinating, um, you know, with numerous, over 50 associates going through our practice, um, throughout my, my experience, um, there is a the few that do take the time to follow you around, uh, even though they're going to do different things, they follow you around, they find out the nuances, they find out the, the style, the, um, how the, the purpose fits in with uh, the activities that they're, that they're um, doing within the, the, the business at a very, very fine level. No, so communication wise, um, style of movement, all that sort of thing. Because you know, if that if the practice members feel comfortable around the associate, they have a tendency to be quite open to go across and see that associate if if the need may may occur. And that's all a different strategy which we can go into in another discussion. The 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 point being on this is that there's an uh, an ability for you to create um, an impression into his or her neurology that allows them to step up several levels um, straight out of the blocks. So allowing them to, to parrot and so allowing that to occur is a really uh, important factor. And as I said before, some um, associates 
don't like doing that. They pull back from it. They'd rather go into the back room and, and get on Facebook. And that's not a very useful thing for their development. So the, the, the fourth thing then is like frontal, um, big picture, um, the willingness to get out there and express. The willingness to go and um, what we might call profess. Right? And that's, I think, where the word of profession comes from anyway. So the, the ability to go out there and to talk it and to walk it and to, um, you know, introduce themselves to people, to, to um, speak in, uh, in as many terms as possible, to do the, the weekly or maybe even two or three times a week um, Facebook lives to the to the um, practice audience to the to go out and 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 in podcasts and to uh, put oneself out there to profess one's position one's one's um, viewpoint on what they are and what they bring and how they can help and so forth obviously within the constraints of the jurisdiction and the law within that that you're in. But the the point being is it's about getting out there and expressing. And, and this particular guy, um, he had no problem with that at all. And he had um, talks lined up in very short order um, with local cafes, local small businesses, um, some government offices. It was, you know, he, he didn't waste any time in getting out there and, and sharing that. So so to be able to profess, to be able to, to get it out there into the public is a is a um is a skill. Uh, sometimes it's a it's a talent which which lies within people, but everyone can do it. It's just a matter of how you do it and what what uh, media you use. So you know, getting your associate to get out there and to um, become the spokesperson for their brand and their um, viewpoint on life and on, on chiropractic. So that's uh, that was the the fourth area here. So so what we've got then is a model that um, when applied saw him grow. It saw him develop his practice very, very quickly. Um, it saw him able to relate to the people that I was relating to because people felt like there was a similarity and they were so different. I mean, he was such a different person to me, but he was able to mirror um, my activities and in order to get a start was able to then um, connect with people at that level. Now it's very very different in his technical application as well and and that was that was fine it was totally okay with me and we were both on a big learning curve and I think the fact that I was able to allow that to occur was actually a, a great benefit to the uh, development of that relationship. Um, it allowed him to succeed and of course, it allowed me to succeed. It allowed me to, to then uh, take on new people because some of my people were now going across and seeing him. Uh, it allowed us to have an opportunity to, to get out and uh, do other stuff that um, I knew that I had the backup within the practice. So it was a you know, very useful, uh, mutually beneficial relationship. But I think the important part about it is is that I didn't have to whip him. He, you know, he was... He, he was self-motivated because he was doing what he loved to do um, and practicing that style that he wanted to practice in. So you know, the key, the key take home from this is if you're considering an associate, whilst you must have the protocols in place you know, and have the purpose clearly defined, you know, when it comes to delivery, then it's the nuances that people pick up on and the technique um, has got to be genuine and, and authentic for the for the person, um, but it, they've got to be good at it. They've got to be dedicated to it. So you know, if they're trying to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that, uh, it really causes a dissonance within uh, within the associate, and people pick that up. So making sure then that you've got a um, a system in place where you can allow a new associate to come in, and they get inspired because they can do application um, in a meaningful way. So what, what happens with this then is that you've got a, uh, a call for the associate. For In, in his case, um, it was about 18 months, and he was ready to go and do it by himself. And that's something that we'll, we'll cover in, a, in another discussion, I think, because a, it warrants um, the um, planning and the, um, the approaching the exit strategies in a way that's going to be mutually beneficial once again. So 
you know, that was it was a fast growth track. Um, and that, I think, had a lot to do with the fact that we gave him the opportunity or I gave him the opportunity of um, being himself, being his own own expression. Anyway, if you're looking at either further developing your associate practice or maybe starting associate practice from scratch and you've got some questions, you want to have a chat with us, I'm very happy to um, take the time to sit down with you and just go through what it is that you're wanting and uh, look at the plan for getting there and whether it would be a, a fit for us to be able to assist you in that. So if that's the case, just type associate in the comments below or if you want to um, private message me and uh, I'll go back with you and we can uh, have a chat.